You're gonna survive this one. <laughs> Look at that. Look how that all crumbled. This, they're all stuck. There's that one little one uh, right there, about eight feet up. It's between that big one. Yeah. Well. Yeah, so once that sets, it should be like 202, yeah, 202. right there. That's well, that would be all right at 202. That I mean, we get it early good. and try some shots with it, like, on it. I mean, we should be able to... I didn't know you were recording. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to use this stack behind me for our foreground element to complement the Milky Way. And can you think of a better subject? Because I can. That's awesome. So... Let's see how that goes. We gotta pray that the Milky Way gods give us clear skies tonight. And yeah, they didn't. Despite the meteorologist's clear sky forecast for the entire evening. And well, ladies and gentlemen, that is landscape photography for you. When we woke up at 1.30 a.m., we peeked outside our hotel room and couldn't see a single star. It was back to warm beds and two disappointed and tired guys. Good night. Good morning. We are down at the coast here in Oregon. We have a full day planned ahead. We're we'll going back to the natural bridges later. We're going to do that hike down below. Uh, going back to Secret Beach at low tide. Let's see what the day brings us. Oh. setting up and scouting for sunset uh, we've just come up 101 and we found a little section here where the sun will set between these stacks quite nicely uh, just generally just makes the whole process and experience much easier when making your your images so sometimes road photography can be really nice this is a simple pull-off viewpoint and now we got some diffused light coming through. This is all cloudy, but the sun is coming through enough. Lighting this up beautiful, making for beautiful light. Simply take a foreground element like these flowers and then go ahead and make your shots. So for this shot here, I want to use the purple flowers as a foreground element and then place my C stacks to balance off the, the shot. I want to get high enough so I can see the waves coming in and shooting slightly down on the flowers in the foreground. Now my light just went back in, so I lost a little light on these I should have shot. What I have to do here is I have to stack my images. So I will set a focus point on these guys here. I will focus on the flowers beyond that. And then I'll focus to probably the first stack. And at that point, I'm probably gonna shoot this. But by the time I focus on this stack, everything else will be in focus at that point. You don't wanna just put your, your, your tripod down anywhere and start shooting because when you're shooting wide, everything gets distorted. Even the slightest movement will distort things, draw things forward, draw things back. So the best thing to do is to either use your viewfinder or use your, your LCD screen and just work the scene walking back and forth that's what i did here in fact i started over there and i found myself walking this way and i got over here and i love the slope of the flowers coming down and how i balanced off the stacks so i moved about five feet and i got much better composition than i would have had over there and then you might end up with something like this Roadside photography can be a blast, especially if you're not actually on the road itself. But there's more. Check out these tips. Another thing I might make note of is 
anything that is constantly changing in the scene. In this case, we have a tide. Every image you make, you are going to have different lines along your coast as that tide comes in. So while you're making images, it's a good idea to study the lines and the patterns, the tide as it's coming in. Camper's got his drone out here and he's... <laughs> I'm not sure if you're picking that up, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're having a blast out here. It's great. So again, your head is into composition and you're thinking about all the elements and the supporting elements. Don't forget about what's happening with the light as it's changing or what's happening with any moving parts, clouds, water, you know, tides, things are moving. And you can use these lines as they come in. Let me show you an example of how the same composition, that is without adjusting my tripod or my focal length, can produce variations on a composition by simply observing, waiting, and capturing various moments as they happen. Beautiful diffused light here. And right now there's nothing in the foreground that's interesting me, but I'm just gonna wait. Larger waves coming in now. Yeah, we got we got one coming right here. And look at this, we got some nice patterns right in the front right here. That's pretty. But I'm gonna wait and see what else. That's nice. What else we get here? Here we go. We got some stuff coming in. Gonna get that, that, and I'm gonna wait for this to recede. Look at that. There we go. We got the foam. This really came, oh, this came right up to me. Here I've captured some reflections and strong diagonal lines. This next image adds more tone and color balance by including the beach sand, and I waited for just the right moment to capture the foam. I loved this one and what the waves are doing for the foreground. S curves, triangles lead the eye to the star of the show. But why stop there? Here's a wonderful image from Camper. There's an entire beachfront to explore, and foreground elements are everywhere. As we can see, the waves are no longer important in this frame, but we still see them. It's the driftwood and horizontal lines in the sand that tell this story of an ever-changing beachfront. I always remind myself to turn around and see what's happening behind me. You often be surprised what you're missing. Beauty is everywhere. Or how about taking it a step further and get up close as Camper did here. You'll be amazed at what you might find. This has been such a lovely stop and a great way to start our day, filling each moment with passion and the love of capturing the wonder of nature. If your situation doesn't allow strenuous hikes, these sorts of roadside photography adventures can be very rewarding. started out with a simple beauty of a cluster of lovely coastal flowers, where off in the distance some sea stacks stood, an ancient reminder of Earth's geologic powers. Next on the agenda, we felt compelled to revisit this spectacular secret beach, and with the tide at its lowest, we could now explore that which was just out of reach. On our journey back up, we discovered a hidden gem that seemed almost camouflaged amongst the underbrush. It was a lofty yet slender waterfall, hiding in the foliage, so green and lush. Natural bridges, what a wondrous hike. Both danger and splendor all rolled into one. A precarious scramble along a steep, narrow path, where with one single misstep, and you're done. A Pacific sunset is something everyone must behold. Swirls of lavender mingling with the dusty shades of meridian blue. The best location to witness this event? A quiet bench or crowded beach. Either place is truly a magnificent view. All right, we are headed back down to Secret Beach. This is all downhill. Something you think you're gonna do if you're in the area, definitely bring your hiking sticks. They're well worth it. They'll help you on the way down, they'll help you on the way up. And there's even a little secret waterfall here on the left-hand side that camper shot yesterday. Kind of had me just on the edge of my seat because he was right on the edge of the freaking cliff with a big stump to the right foot. I was in action, ready to grab him if he tripped, but <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be quick enough. Much dark. 
Yeah. So it's just going to be like that little falls in the darkness. Yep. That's pretty. Look at this little secret hidden waterfall. Hey, this guy. <laughs> and uh, Kemper was standing right here. So his right foot was up against this. And it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but that is a straight, straight here shot. Straight down to your death. So, yeah. Anyway, very pretty. These doggy doggies. Hey. Super Beach again. We just did the arduous walk down all the uh, all the craggy rocks here, and there's places incredibly beautiful. It's like this oasis, a secret oasis. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn you in that thing! I love the fact that I kept capturing Mark being himself. Oh, he was so used to me always filming that he never knew when I was which makes for great organic content. Real moments, real experiences. We came at low tide today because we really wanted to explore this sea caves tunnel, which also leads to another beach, but it just wasn't low enough on this day. It's easy to get trapped between beaches if you're not paying attention to the incoming tide. In fact, much of Oregon's coast is like this. There's an extra low tide. I don't know anything about tide. And I know I see people, they walk through there. And they said, make sure you don't stay out there and know where your tribes because you don't get uh, trapped. Mark's seen video of people going through the cave, but not today. Yeah, video. I, they've been here and they come down there and they go, oh yeah, and they were walking in that cave. We'd be crushed instantly by sheer power of the waves. There's no way in hell you go through that cave. Nope, not today. No, even, not if that, even if that came down low enough to walk through, you're not going to get through that cave. So there must be... There must be extra low tides or extra high tides. While the cave wasn't an option for our visit, there are other secrets to Secret Beach. And as luck would have it, a fellow photographer shared a location hidden in plain sight. Wait till you see this. It really sums up the resplendency of Secret Beach. As I turn around here, that would now be heading in the direction back to the trailhead. But before that, and just to the right before this passage, is a narrow ravine hidden in plain sight. A short exploratory walk would easily reveal Ridge Creek, or as Mark would say, Ridge Crick, a Pennsylvania thing. So we ran into a guy on Secret Beach who was nice enough to approach us and share a secret vantage point that he had found on Secret Beach. A little ravine leading right out. Fresh water, stream coming down. Absolutely gorgeous. I shared the information with Mark. I was flying my drone, Mark came over to check it out. Came back, was really excited. I am here now shooting that scene. I'm currently waiting for some people to walk by. But I just wanted to thank the guy. We tried to find him. You. We tried to find you if you're watching this and uh, wanted to thank you um, for sharing the information because this is really, I mean, it really tells the story of, of this place, of, of Secret Beach. It gives you that eye hole to peer into this secret, magical, gorgeous place. And it tells the story quite nicely. So, unfortunately, we didn't get your name. I don't think so anyway, but either way, we just wanted to thank you, and here are our shots. Enjoy.
We returned to Natural Bridges after Secret Beach, but this time we were taking the hike to the bottom. We were both looking forward to this experience and wondered what lay ahead. Two twenty-six. Two twenty-six. All right. Natural bridges going down. All right, we are at Natural Bridges again. This time we're taking the hike. I'm not going over the bridge. That's more for you young ones. <laughs> A bit too dangerous, but taking a hike nonetheless. Honestly, if we weren't carrying thirty pounds on our back then perhaps we might have considered visiting the bridges. Just to my right and straight down are the bridges. Thus far, the descent hasn't been that bad, but the way back is all uphill. But listen to those nature sounds. The birds, the wind, the ocean. What a delight. This is where the hike gets very steep, and I do recommend trekking poles. To my left and in front of Mark, one misstep and it's straight down to the rocky sea. Trekking poles help with balance and leverage. Just be sure to invest in a good pair. You don't want them collapsing while you're leaning in. This is sensational isolated beauty. More so than I expected. Wow. This is... This is extraordinary. I mean, I know this isn't doing any justice. Unbelievable. That's a long way down. Got to be careful. We continue to be teased with obstructed views, yet with enough visuals to arouse the senses. It's not much further to the bridges and an outcrop that promises unobstructed views. All right, we're down at the bottom of the, uh, the trail here. It is a bit of a dangerous trail. I would re highly recommend hiking sticks for this. Um, there's some sections like this section here where you're right along the edge. You gotta, you gotta really watch every step. Um, but this is the first opening, first clearing we can actually see down, down the cut. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, freaking amazing. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just an oasis of wonder and beauty, just raw nature. We've made it. The bridges are just beyond this path, another few minutes. But we were interested in the outcrop just to my left. As you can see, this is not for the faint of heart. It's narrow with plenty of roots to trip you up, or shall I say, trip you down. That's a little... have to know your limits, and seeing this in a video is much more compelling to climb out there than actually being here. We had so much more of the Oregon coast to explore, and neither one of us wanted to ruin that experience. A young man did come through and crawled his way out there, 
holding on to the roots. I can't believe I didn't get any footage. But it's obvious from the foot traffic that plenty of folks do go out. While we made our decision not to pursue the vantage point, there was so much beauty to photograph around us. And moments like these are so special. Nature like this has a way of humbling you while keeping you captivated with her extraordinary presence. And for every day of your life beyond, you have an unforgettable bond with these fleeting moments. You'll never be the same. Nature changes us with each new experience. And we relive those high points time and again and cherish them for a lifetime. When you create a photograph during these moments, you literally capture your feelings and the essence of your experience through the eye and into the fabric of your soul. Here's Mark getting his shot. We found another opening here. And he is being very, very careful as he is not only on the edge, but on a, on a slant going down. And that is a long drop down. <laughs> so I wanna shoot this guy out here. I tried to get him back here through the trees, but this might be nice. The light's not the greatest here at this point, unfortunately, but it's moody. It's got a mysterious feel to it with the fog rolling in in the back. And then look right down, right down here. Magical, just magical. Our second day at Gold Beach was almost over. We returned to the Porthole Cafe, but this time for dinner, and then headed back to Pistol River North Beach for sunset. We were exhausted, yet enjoying every moment, and eating a good meal energized us. We were ready for our last shoot at Gold Beach before traversing north on US 101. And if you recall, we scouted here this morning with a projected sunset between two stacks. We were spot on. As the light faded, we began heading back, but Oregon had a surprise treat for Blue Hour, and we couldn't resist the atmospheric conditions at Myers Creek, another magical roadside stop. 